Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be ranking my Pat McGrath collection. I did this about, I think it was almost two years ago. It's been a while and in that time I've definitely picked up a few more, lots more in fact, Pat McGrath palettes. I have a couple of new motherships, I've got the new Bridgerton palettes, I've got several quads that I didn't have the first time I did this Pat McGrath ranking and also some of the holiday palettes and special editions, things like that. So my collection has definitely grown and there has absolutely been quite a bit of movement as to how I like these palettes and where my favourites sit. So I thought we would redo and update my ranking so you can see how I'm feeling about these new palettes and how my collection has kind of altered over the time since I last filmed this video. So I now have 16 palettes so let's get started ranking shall we so in 16th place the bottom of the ladder the very last least loved palette mm, I'm so sorry it's eternal Eden now it's not that I hate her it's not a terrible palette it doesn't have any issues as far as performance it's just really unexciting underwhelming for me for a Pat McGrath palette even her quads they give me a lot of joy. Like this table right here, if you could see this, there's a lot of joy down here. And this one definitely doesn't give me as much joy as any of these. It, this was a very easy, like some of these decisions were tough. This was a very easy, I never use this. There's really no reason for me to reach for this one because it's just a very boring, for want of a better word, underwhelming palette. It's just, there's just nothing exciting about it. And it mainly comes down to the color story. It's very blah, it's very muted and understated, which is not typically very Pat McGrath. And it's an easy like pass over. Like if I go to reach for something and I, even if I want this sort of pinky mauve color story, I'm gonna reach for these others way before I even remember that I, this one exists. It's a very easy pass. In 15th place, it's Interstellar Icons. Now this will be loved by some people far more than it is by me. This is definitely a personal preference thing about how, why this one is lower down. It's the color story. It just doesn't do it for me. These aren't really like my typical colors and I just don't find this as cohesive as some of the, or any, or a lot of the other quads, in fact. It's like you need other, combos in here. I always feel like I'm kind of missing something from this palette. It has no mattes, which, you know, I, I feel like I need at least a matte in most palettes. And especially this one, just to pull everything together, I feel like I need to reach for another palette to pull everything together. It's just not quite a complete colour story for me and how I do my makeup. The shades, again, like the Eternal Eden quad, there's nothing wrong with the formulas in here. They're actually beautiful. You know, they are beautiful formulas that work well and do what they want them to do. How I do my makeup, the colour stories I like, it's just not quite finished in some kind of way. So in 14th place, an all shimmer palette that actually I have come to love. And it's Ritualistic Rose, oh, just so pretty. And although this is like an all shimmer palette, an all shimmer quad, I feel like I can get a finished cohesive look out of this. In fact, I can probably get a couple of different looks out of this without reaching for any other palette unlike interstellar icons you know i like to use this sort of bronze shade all in the crease all over the eye and then i'll use this shade on like the outer third and then these two will go on my lids and i love the look that i come up with it's different it's quite pretty and it has this gorgeous shift when you use all four together and it's very eye catching and i think it's just beautiful and although there's no mattes in there i actually because of the way that these shades work together and the way that i like to use them on the lid i actually don't really feel like i need another shadow. I could go with a bit of bronzer in the crease if I felt like it, but I really often will just use this as a standalone quad and I have no issues with it. And I really like how it all works together on the lid, even though it is four shimmers, but it works. It works somehow. In 13th place, we have the first of the two, 
the two Mothership Megas that I have in my collection. This is the first, the original Mothership Mega that was released whoa, a couple of years ago now for holiday. And it's definitely my least favorite of the two Mothership Megas, as you can tell, because it's the one that we talked about first. At the time, I loved this because it was just something so different from Pat McGrath, something so different from the brand that, you know, you had all of these colors, a huge big palette, way more shades than you get in a regular Mothership and I just found this really fun. You know, it has a lot of colour in here that isn't typically what I would reach for, but it also has plenty of shades that are more my comfort zone and my cup of tea, so I felt like safe buying it and knew I would use it. It also has a couple of mattes, which I appreciate, three mattes in this one, I think. Yeah, three mattes in here, so it kind of gives you something to work with as far as creating a colour story, but I will say in comparison to a lot of other palettes that have this many shades, there's just really again like lacking sort of cohesive complete finished looks in here because of the only a few mattes and because the shades are just so different it's a complete like mishmash of just random colors like how I look at it and I'm you can definitely get some beautiful looks out of here you can get some wearable looks out of here but there's just I feel like it's a bit muddled there's a lot going on it's a little confusing for like an amateur like myself who's not really super artistic with eyeshadows and colors and making incredibly beautiful colorful looks using all different tones that's not really like my jam my cup of tea my style so for me I don't really use this ever anymore and at the time I've played with it and I had fun and I enjoyed it but it's not something that I got longevity out of because it's just not really as me as all of the palettes that come above it. But I do love that Pat McGrath did those palettes because I feel like they reach a completely different audience and they allow you to pick up a lot of Pat McGrath shadows for a much smaller price tag, which I think is great. And I think it kind of reaches a whole new audience and a whole new taste because obviously the regular motherships are really up my street. That's why I have so many of them. I love them. So I feel like that's something completely different to someone who wants to try Pat McGrath shadows for less money and in a different way. And I think I love that she, she brings those out. So it's in 12th place, another quad, we're going back to the quads, and it is Risqué Rosé this time. I love this quad. This is such an amazing quad. Like for four shades, I just feel like this is the epitome of like nailing a cohesive, complete quad. You've got a satin, a matte, a shimmer, and like a special shade. You can easily make like two, maybe three, completely different eye looks out of here and they're all stunning. Every shade, every formula in here is like chef's kiss. I quite often would just go in there with a light bit of the matte and then this shimmer on the lid for like a softer daytime look. Then of course if you add in the fuchsia you can bring it quite a pink look, a vibrant look. If you swap around the order that you use these two in you get a completely different look each time and then of course bringing in this stunning shift shade. Just the most beautiful glorious shimmer. I mean it's like wet lilac, shifting, like stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. And just the formulas in here are excellent. And I just love the colors. It's not one I reach for a lot because it is quite a full glam, full beat effect if you're gonna use, especially if you're gonna use, you know, this shade in here. So I like kind of some of the softer ones more for more everyday use. But this is like, if I'm feeling like going all out, it's such a beautiful quad. It's just, it's different and it's special and it just is, it's definitely a joyful one. Like I feel joy when I'm using this. I'm excited to use it. It's something fun and different, but still something that feels like me and kind of in my safe space. In 11th place, the last one that did not quite make the top 10, but is still one that I really love and reach for a lot, and it's Bronze Borealis. If you're not new here, you'll know and be able to see just from this color story why it's one of my absolute favorite quads and why it's so high up the ranking for a quad, because it's literally just me in a quad. A Pat McGrath quad 
almost curated especially for me. It's neutral, it's pretty, it's everyday, it's soft glam and it's just easy. I don't have to think about it. It pretty much does maybe one or two maybe different looks but it's just perfect. Everything about it, the combination, the formulas, the effect it gives on the eye. This is one that when it first arrived I thought was boring. You know, it's just like, it's just a neutral quad but it's a Pat McGrath neutral quad so, you know, it's not really on the same plane as a lot of other neutral quads. It's just so pretty, beautiful, understated, but in a very gorgeous way. I feel like whenever I wear this in videos, I get a lot of compliments, a lot of comments on my eye looks, and I just think it's so pretty in an understated, unexpected way. And I love using this. It's a very easy reach for me because I just know it's gonna give me exactly what I want, and it's very easy to work with, and it's very simple, but effective. So in ninth and 10th place, I'm gonna talk about together the two Bridgerton palettes. I really find it hard to pick between these two. I had like kind of put them when I was doing my sort of draft ranking, I was standing here kind of putting everything in their order and I put the original Bridgerton palette in 10th and the newer version in 9th. And I'm having doubts now, I'm, I'm having second thoughts. I absolutely expected to like this new one more and most. And the reason I thought that is because of one, this sort of special shade, the shimmer, sorry, it's over here. It's hard to see in the monitor, forgive me. But this sort of special rose gold, like topper shade, you know, that's like my color. That's my kind of shade. It's stunning. Also this chartreuse, which is something different that I would just prefer this would be more me. Even like the softer, like sort of rosy gold shimmer. I thought, again, it's more up my street. But I think all in all, all of this is why I'm going to put this in 10th and the original Bridgerton palette in ninth, and I'll explain why. The reason I've kind of changed my mind about which of the two that I like the most is because this one is definitely more in my like safe space, in my comfort zone, more expected. I think the other one was a real surprise for me that even the shades work together and I could get a look out of it. This one is what I expected. You know, it gives me the looks that I expected. The look I did today, you know, I used this, the satin, the matte, and then the two top shimmers layered on top of each other. And it, it looks how I expect it to look. It's kind of muted. It's a, a pretty wearable color story. Even when I use like the green, the blue, because it's so much lighter and softer than the blue in the original palette is again, it's much more wearable and muted and it doesn't pull quite so blue, it's softer. And so all in all, yes, it is more wearable for me and more in my comfort zone, but it's also less surprising and kind of unique to my collection. So I think that's why actually, I was surprised to find myself really pulling for the original Bridgerton. So as I said, ninth place, the original Bridgerton palette really just knocked my socks off when it arrived. I really didn't expect to love it. I didn't expect to find myself reaching for it after I'd own it, owned it for weeks, but it's just so unique to my collection and different. It just somehow works together. Like I could not imagine looking at it and looking at the combination of colors. It's got, you know, like, pink, a sort of peachy pink, a fuchsia, this like royal blue, and then like some rosy tones in there. And I thought this is a muddle. It's not really how I'm going to use it. You know, seeing how Pat McGrath did her tutorials with this, I was like, that's just not my kind of eyeshadow. <laughs> Wheezing. Here are the two blues together. So this is the new Bridgerton blue, and this is the original. And it's just that shift and that sort of lack of base where you can kind of put that over the top of anything and it's just gonna give it that gorgeous blue hint and you're gonna get the shift where it looks bluer and then more violet and it's just a bit more of an interesting shade to me than the newer blue. You know, I just think at, like in this day and age, at this point in 2022, there are very few palettes that I am drawn to and reach for that are not just what I expect to like. I did not expect to like this. I certainly did not expect to love this, but I do. And it's just different to anything else I own. I get a lot of fun out of it and it was unexpected, but I think this, the look that I like to do with this palette where I pretty much use everything in here, it's just so 
eye-catching and different and special and when it's all on the lid it's just like you can tell it's this palette it looks like nothing else and I think it's gorgeous and that's why it unexpectedly won out over the newer palette which I did I was not expecting but I mean they're both it's personal preference they're both gorgeous they both kind of offer something slightly different to each other and it's just going to be personal preference which one you're the most drawn to but I'm proud of myself actually that I ended up liking the one that was a little bit different for me so in eighth place the final smaller palette the top quad top dog of the quads if you will and of course I'm sure many of you will have guessed it it's a voyeuristic vixen venus in flares voyeuristic vixen I don't know why this one has two names but we're just gonna go with it it just doesn't get any better than this for me for a quad like this is like my go-to it's a soft glam like neutral quad but then it does have like this more bronzy shimmer if you can just see there that has that sort of really interesting like shift to it but it is it again it's quite versatile it's a neutral quad and all of the formulas are gorgeous it has the matte that I feel I need in a quad for it to be like a whole look and it to really like work by itself with like no other palettes or dipping into a bronzer needed but you can, you, you know, I will most often just pretend this shade is not in there and I just use these three and I, you know, also just use the bottom two shades and maybe this in the inner corner. And it, so it does give you a few options and it will look completely different if you do get this shade involved because it is a higher amount of like sparkle. Again, I sort of look at this shade in the pan and I don't really feel like using it, but on the eye, it looks so beautiful this bottom shimmer is like one of my favorite pat mcgrath shadows of all time the high shine of that shade is just like second to none and actually this shade that looks completely like a golden bronze in the pan actually has quite a lot of sort of rosiness to it that really looks stunning on the lid but this is like ugh. One of my all time favorite like single shadows, just to whack that all over the eye and go is like a dream. I think as well that the matte in here, I think I've only got a dry pinky left to use, but again, it looks really, really rosy and reddish in the pan. And it's not so much actually on the eye blended out. It's much more of a sort of neutral, a standard like neutral brown, which again, suits me much better. So it's like, I look at it and I think, hmm, but then on the eye, it's, out of this world it's very me it's like the ultimate neutral quad from pat mcgrath there really isn't like a mothership that's just like neutrals but i feel like that's as close as we've gotten so far and i'm here for it in seventh place the final palette that is not a mothership so my top palette from pat mcgrath that is not a mothership and it is last year's Mothership Mega. Well, is it a Mothership then? You know what I mean. It's not a standard classic Mothership. This, I love this. This is just such a fun palette. This was her holiday palette last year, her larger Mothership Mega, and I just live for it. It's so fun. Now, there's a few reasons why I prefer this one so much to the original Mothership Mega. One, this has an extra matte in it. And not only does it have an extra mat, but the mats that are in it, so it has four mats and then the rest are shimmers. It not only has an extra mat, but it also, it's the, the colors of the mats. They're more neutral. They work with more shades in here. So you can get a lot more full cohesive looks out of this palette than I think you can the Celestial Divinity. So this is Celestial Oddity, Odyssey, 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 Celestial Odyssey, and the original Holiday Mothership Mega is Celestial Divinity. I just find this one offers you so much more variety and options for complete looks, especially for someone like me. There are a lot of like neutral shimmers in here that work beautifully and make very wearable looks. There's a lot of shades and colors in here that are really in my comfort zone that I like, that suit me, that I will use. There's really very few colors that I don't really want to use. It's basically this sort of very orange, bronzy shade and maybe the darker sort of midnight blue shimmer that aren't really my typical reach for shades. But I would still use them. They're not unusable or too much or like horrifying. It's just that they're not typically the colors that I reach for. Everything else, a very wearable shade for me for such a large palette. Again, the value for money, 
the fun factor that these palettes offer you for all of these different options and shades in Pat McGrath's shadows is just great. And the packaging is so beautiful. A super fun palette. And actually I stayed using that one. I mean, I still am using it regularly now, but it was the longevity of it was far above the Celestial Divinity for me, just because it was just much more wearable and usable for me on a kind of everyday basis. So now we come to the mothership rankings. I have six motherships now, and in sixth place, I feel I hate this because I honestly love every single one of these motherships. These are my favorite eyeshadow palettes in my entire collection. I'm obsessed with them. They're amazing, every one of them. So I hate saying this is like the worst one because it may be like my least favorite mothership, but it's still like my, like very, very, one of my very, very favorite palettes overall. So it seems wrong to say it's like the worst in anything, but it is mothership five. And I, I think the reason why I feel the least excited and drawn to this one now is because this was my first, which is another reason why I feel terrible calling it the worst one or my least favorite one, just because I've had it a very long time. I just really don't reach for this one anymore. I just think because I've had it so long, I've kind of got bored of it. I've, you know, got everything out of it that I possibly could. And there are newer, shinier things in my collection as I'm a fickle, fickle girl. It is a very wearable palette. You know, there's a lot of very wearable, like daytime, softer, more muted shades in here. You can get a variety of options. And I think it's a really beautiful, very cohesive color story. I think it's a very, very nice eyeshadow palette. I think that's why it's maybe less exciting. I think the other palettes bar one, are just more exciting, unique, offer you something special and different. This one is very much in the comfort zone. Every shade in here is very wearable and usable like any day of the week. And I get a, I got a lot of use out of this one. Not so much these days because shiny and newer things came along. And like I said, I'm a fickle lady, but it is just, you could buy this one and use this every day of your life and be happy and have a different look every single day of the week. And it, but it is, more expected, safer, I think, than all of the others bar one, can you guess? In fifth place, it's Divine Rose, the original Divine Rose. What was this, Mothership number? I think this is Mothership seven, I believe. And this is the one that for me is just even more expected than Mothership five. I just think this is very soft muted, understated, but it's Pat McGrath. And this is like me, my colors. That's why I, I find this, I just love this one more than five because it is just, it's more my colors, but obviously it's very safe. It's very muted. It's very understated. And when this came out, it was like joy of joys because we just didn't have something like this from Pat McGrath. Everything was over the top, blingy, more colorful than a lot of people, you know, it's preference. And it perhaps offered the wimps among us, the kind of soft glam lovers, something a bit more safe, a bit more in our comfort zone. And I was all over it. And I just absolutely loved this. When it first came out, it was just so beautiful beautiful but it is understated and it is softer and it is more daytime versus evening and it is just it's softer it's less it's less loud it's quieter it's more romantic and I love her for that I love having this palette in my collection when I have that moment but it's it, again it's less unique it's less exciting it's less challenging than the four that come above her now these four oh this was the hardest part of this these four I, I was moving them about, back and forth, changing them around. Any day of the week, depending on my mood, depending on the occasion, the season, I, I feel like I could move these around and this was really, really hard. So fourth to first, pinch of salt, please, because any of these could have won on a different day. I'm These are like it for me. These are all incredible and it hurts me to say fourth because I just don't understand how this is in fourth place in any lineup, in any ranking, but it somehow is and it's Mothership One. And can you guess I don't know the real names of any of them <laughs> and it's not on the box. Uh, so I can only apologize that I'm only using the numbers, but I will put the names for you <laughs> once I've looked them up because I am useless. I mean, this palette is so beautiful. It's the coolest. I don't mean like in the playground. I mean, you know, 
undertones wise but it is also like the color story these cool tones this like per like softer purple <laughs> it's again it's one of my favorite shades that like of the bunch this is just glorious and what I quite often will do is take this I mean either of these but I typically reach for this bottom special shade and I like to put it over the top because layered that is like all my dreams come true this blue is insane <sighs> please and again layered let me show you this this is the thing I would really not ever go about my day with this blue on my eyes but when I add this topper over the top as you might have guessed. It just tones it down and makes it stunningly beautiful, but wearable for me. And like, I feel like it just works for me more. And now, and now it's like the beauty, most beautiful blue that I wanna wear every day of my life. Both of these like N2 shades are so interesting and so stunning. And again, topped over these shades, it's glorious. I even just love this gold because it's quite a sort of white gold and it's quite yellow, but it's also quite light and bright. And again, it makes them for a very, very interesting inner corner. Like I like to do a sort of mainly blue or even just using the like the lilac or the purple in here then topped with these shimmers and then I use the gold in my inner corner and it just works so beautifully the looks out of here like they are just chef's kiss very unique very eye-catching like different but so gorgeous and glorious I love this palette so so much like I said I kind of had this in like first second third over and over again, moving around, moving around. It's very hard to choose between your children. But I do think I use this less often and I feel like I reach for this mainly in sort of autumn and winter and I don't really reach for it in the spring and summer months. Whereas the three that come above this one, I feel a little more versatile and I use more often. And you may be surprised to know that in third place, a former number one, it's Divine Rose 2. She's dropped two places below two of my newer purchases. I can't quite believe it, but I definitely don't use her as much as I did when I first picked her up. Don't get me wrong, I still absolutely live for this colour story. I think it's so beautiful. It's very me. It's sort of understated in a way, pinks and that sort of, you know, colour family, but in a like dialed up party evening way, you can absolutely get very, very soft, easy daytime looks out of here. It's like Divine Rose 1, but the, the naughty older sister, you know? It's pretty, but it's like had a Red Bull at the same time, and it's very, very evening friendly too. You can go from like 0 to 100 in here, whereas I feel like Divine Rose 1 is like 0 to 50. Is where you'll get to. 0 to 100, very possible within these shades. A bit more versatility, more going on, more exciting. Formulas are insane. Again, this, this shade down here, very, very beautiful. I'm just wheezing, just swatching. It's just divine. Divine rose in a shade. Ugh, the shift the shine <sighs> just beautiful and I find like some of the softer shimmers are just so smooth in here I also think that this special shade has just far less fallout it's less crumbly it's a bit different it's more of a sort of hyped up shimmer topper as opposed to being those sort of looser glitter um like special shades that are in a lot of these other palettes this one is smoother and softer and much easier to use so again that's a real plus in its favor I will never get bored of this one it's just so fun fun but still it's just me my color story but like dialed up on my most flamboyant day which is a Wednesday if you're curious I don't know why maybe because it used to be student night who knows hump day don't know so I think it's no coincidence that number two and number one are my most recently purchased motherships because that's just I don't know if that's just me like I said I'm fickle 
I have a short attention span when it comes to makeup. I'm like onto the next thing, onto the next thing. And then I just forget all my past loves and leave them in the closet. <laughs> For legal reasons, that was a joke. I've only done that once that anyone knows about. So, and that's the thing. That's why you have to take these sort of ranking videos with a slight pinch of salt because I am fickle and I do like move on and I'm like, oh, it's new and shiny. So it must be my favorite. And that's what happens to me. Okay, so I can only apologize about that. But... I'm pretty happy with my choices, to be honest with you. In second place, it's subversive. It's subversive. My second most recent <laughs> Pat McGrath Mothership palette that I picked up. Here's the thing about subversive. This is definitely, yes, I think it is. This is the most varied colour story. I feel like, you know, you've got pinks, blues, yellow goldy greens you've got some quite versatile mattes in here that can be used very lightly or built up you've got like a purple a sort of midnight blue there's a lot of color in here for me at least on the scale on the charlotte richter scale of color this is like pretty colorful but at the same time there's nothing super bright and garish and like pastels that scare me from using it you know i can easily all day go in with a light hand with this matte and just this shimmer and i've got like the most office friendly soft look going you know you've got some of these toppers they the shift i mean you can see it there as i move the palette is just like heaven this shade here is absolutely insane and it's another one where I like to put the topper shade over and it just takes it from like 99 to 100. Like these two in combination like just makes all my dreams come true. For me in my collection it's a very unexpected, very outside of my comfort zone colour story but I feel like I can get 10 looks out of here that will look different every single day of the week, daytime, evening, office, party, New Year's Eve, date night. We've got it covered in here, it's very versatile and it does have like some colours that are a bit more like unique, something out of my comfort zone, not something that I have a hundred palettes that are anything like this but I find them all wearable and fun to use and like suit me and my preferences and work for me. And I think it's just gorgeous palette, quite unique. It's like fire on the eyes. It's just gorgeous, stunning, and very, very like Pat McGrath. Like if you have any of these shades on your eyes, it's like one look at you will tell you that's a Pat McGrath shadow right there divine and if you know my collection if you know what happened to me recently you will know that number one is my latest most recent Pat McGrath palette one that I just never thought I was going to own until the big sale came and I got really excited and I thought about making this video and I wanted to kind of make it as comprehensive as possible and I thought sure give the people what they want they're telling me I need this palette it's Midnight Sun. <sighs> Look at her. <sighs> I don't even want to stand next to her, to be honest. Here's the thing about this palette. I feel like Divine Rose 2 was me in a palette five years ago. Midnight Sun is me in a palette now. There's something a bit more sophisticated and a bit more mature to me about this palette and this colour story. It's like muted and understated but in a very vibrant way. It is quite a unique overall colour story when you look at some of the combinations in here, you know, quite a sort of ready matte, a very cool tone matte, you know, this stunning purple. Again, this shade, the toppers, this sort of almost runs quite green. And again, there, there's a lot going on here that you don't necessarily notice at first glance. I always just sort of thought picking this one up. And the reasons are valid. Like if I didn't have a channel, I definitely don't need this when you look at the rest of my Pat McGrath collection. There's a lot of shades in here. And I know that actually when this was released, there are several repeats from previous palettes in here. But forgetting that as an overall, just, you know, forget what your collection looks like. This just gives you a very comprehensive, cohesive, very varied amount of options for looks palette that is completely everything you need in one place and I think the big thing that edges this for me is the mattes because this is a really light matte that is hard to find in Pat McGrath palettes a lot of the time her mattes are much deeper and they can be used with a light hand I've definitely find this one 
can be very, very soft and used just really nicely with a light hand and a small amount to just deepen this one up a little. But the combination of these three mats, one, I feel like a lot of the Pat McGrath motherships, they have like one or two mats and it's like never quite enough for me and what I wanna do. The three in here like do everything I ever need them to do because the thing about Pat's mats, which I feel like should be like a shop somewhere on the high street. It maybe sells mats and it's owned by someone called Pat. Just snowballing there. But the thing about Pat's mats is that they build, they are so flexible. You can really use them with a light hand and buff them out and get a very light wash and you can build them on top of each other and build up and it's like you've got three different colors but you've only used one pan. And so with that in mind, these three mats literally give me everything I need every day of the week. I can use, you know, this shade and warm everything up or cool everything out. And just the combination, it's everything I need regardless of what other colors I want to use. This is like the most stunning shade of all time and both of these shades on the end are again the sort of smoother less fallouty less crumbly formula when it comes to like those two end shades one of my favorite things in life is to layer these two that purple with that shimmer on the top oh yeah just picture it please I beg of you it is a very me palette these days more me than like divine rose 2 is these days you know I've moved a little bit away from doing the sort of pinks every day a little bit more neutral a bit more sort of understated color and just fun and this is just I mean the formulas in here are amazing the options are here in here are amazing it's just everything I want from a palette if I had to just choose one for life this would be the one that I would choose. And I don't actually, I'm gonna back myself here, I don't actually think it's just because it's my newest one. I think that's gonna to be top spot for quite some time. I can only thank you guys for literally bending my arm behind my back and telling me I must pick that up and that I will love it because of course you are right. You know me better than I know my own self at times. So there you have it. Those are my 16 Pat McGrath palettes ranked please, I beg of you, tell me your number one Pat McGrath palette in the comment section down below. Is this what you expected? Were you expecting these changes? Any surprises in here? Please let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye.